afternoon, good evening, everyone. So uh, it's my pleasure to meet you all of you again uh, in uh, ECNS YNS webinar today. So uh, I'm uh, Ben uh, from Hong Kong, and on behalf of the Professor Kato, I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, ACNS one as uh, webinars. Today, uh, we have a, a small change in uh, our schedule. We'll have our our uh, first speaker, our YNS speaker, Tota Abdelhaz Kidis, who'll be talking about the advancing uh, microsurgery uh, in uh, LMIC through no cost hands on micro and osmosis courses first. And then followed by our expert uh, speakers, uh, uh, Professor uh, Di Rocco, who, who will um, talk about the management of optic uh, pathways uh, tumors. And uh, then we'll go back to our uh, first uh, expert speaker, Professor Saito, who will be talking about the flow reversal uh, with bypass for uncapable uh, endoses. Uh, the chair of today's session is uh, Professor uh, Sumo, who is the Professor and Chairman of uh, the Department of Neurosurgery of, of the Jifu University Graduate School of Medicine in uh, Jifu uh, in Japan. Uh, our discussant today is, uh, is uh, Professor Kostadin, who is a Professor in Neurosurgery, Department of Neurosurgery, the Jikai University Post, uh, School of Medicine in Tokyo, uh, Japan. And our second discussant today is Professor Ariel who is a postdoctoral research fellow at the Radovanuic Lab in the Kimbra Research Institute University Health Lab, the University of Toronto in Canada. To moderate the sessions uh, today, uh, we have Dr. Sajin and me, uh, Dr. Ben, and Dr. Teague, and uh, Dr. Sugiti, and also Dr. Jui Sen. So shall I invite our chair, uh, Professor Isumo, to introduce our uh, uh, first uh, YNS uh, speakers, uh, Dr. Kiris. Professor Isumu? Yes. Uh, first speaker is uh, Professor Kiris. Uh, his title is Advancing Microneurosurgery in LIMIACs Through No Cost Hands On Micro Anastomosis Course. Could you please start your lecture? Sure. Dr. Kiris? Can you hear my slides right now? Yes. Okay. Good, good evening, good afternoon, and morning, everyone. My name is Abdullah Kirish. I'm working as a scientist at University of Wisconsin Medicine. Today, I would like to briefly mention about our uh, approach uh, to introduce microsurgery laboratory training in low and income countries. Before I, I begin, I would like to extend my deepest condolence to uh, Professor Fukushima on the passing. Of Dr. Fukushima, his legacy will be followed for years. First of all, I have no conflict of interest. This is our beautiful city, Medicine, Wisconsin. I would like to very briefly mention about my historical, like my background. In 2015, I graduated from my medical school in Istanbul, Turkey, and worked the uh, last six and a half years in two different nursery uh, departments, uh, two and a half years in Nitipa University with Professor Ture and four and a half years with uh, Professor Bashka here at UW Medicine. I started working in microsurgery uh, laboratory in 2013 when I was in medical school. I started uh, in, in here UW Medicine, Dr. Bashka's lab that time. And in Turkey, I, I spent quite a time in Yetepe University, where Professor uh, Ture was chairman and Professor Chagil was a faculty, and returned back to here UW Medicine in 2019 and continued my uh, studies with uh, Professor Bashkaya. Before I, I move on, I would like to briefly mention about just in a couple slides the historical background about micronostomology training and how all like microneurosurgery start, because I think it's really important. Uh, Professor Yashagi, he spent 14 months in Burlington government in Professor Donaghy's laboratory and mainly he, he worked with operative microscope and performed vascular anastomosis, application loops, being mainly microvascular uh, surgeries and then returned back to Zurich and start to apply those techniques that he learned in micro technique in Donaghy's lab and start to operate on patients. And here, as you can see, uh, Professor Yashagi mentioned about when he returned back to uh, Zurich, he started to apply 
those micro techniques that he learned uh, in, in Donaghy's lab to do all different uh, pathologies of the central nervous system, not only vascular surgeries, but including like aneurysm, AVM, cavernomas, extreme sex increasing tumors of the central nervous system. I think this shows the quality of the and importance of the microvascular uh, anastomosis training. And always, Professor Shaggy suggests us to like uh, work in the laboratories for a long, long time. And here at UW Medicine, uh, Professor Bashkaya, he started microvascular training curriculum, which I previously mentioned uh, in ACNS webinars in 2016. And uh, when I became the Professor Bashkaya's uh, lab manager, I was lucky to up upgrade it and uh, I would like very briefly mention about like our initiative that we start here at UW Medicine in Bashkaya Lab. As Medicine Microsurgery Initiative, we provide free, accessible, and sustainable microsurgery training to healthcare professionals from low and income countries in their own countries through a novel approach that combines microsurgery, kit donation with offline. Live stream and in person assistance. Today, I would like to briefly mention about in person assistance in details. Those are our current numbers. We, we already donated 71 basic and advanced training kits in 19 countries, 31 centers, organized live stream training stations, and, and in person uh, courses, which I would like to briefly mention about. Before before going to uh, the courses, I, I would like to uh, mention about the inspiration behind our initiative in Turkey when I, I spent two and a half years with Dr. Ture. I learned what we need from operator microscope. And this is like uh, Professor Ture's current uh, operator microscope. And, and also I learned about where I can find such like a microscope in the United States. When I came to here at UW Medicine, we had one tabletop microscope, size microscope, and it was overlooked. Nobody was using it. One day I assembled it, clean it, and, and test it, and it was fascinating. Then I said, like, I, I should find such microscopes and start to use in training, microsomosis training in our laboratory. Then I, I start looking for those microscopes from online auction web page, which I could uh, find a couple of them and purchase uh, with my own money and test them. Also, I test lots of different light source and instruments and come up with a basic uh, train, micro-anastomosis training kit, which a stereo microscope, light source, and basic training uh, instruments. And I, I test those microscope instruments, everything. And other than me, a lot of other people tested this down the grad student, and he tested that he was very comfortable to using those microscope and instruments other than those people we had like is over uh, 66 people from uh, over 30 countries in the last three years all those research fellows also use those microscopes and they were comfortable to use it then by the time we start getting more and more uh, microscopes and those are the microscopes that once they were used in, in even real surgery years it is the pictures from the real surgery, and here uh, Dr. Julius Jacobson he is using same microscope optics head that in a animal uh, surgery, and this is one of the same microscope tabletop microscope. The only difference is the stand, other than like the head, the optical part is completely same as you can see here. So those are high quality stereoscopic. Uh, microscopes and after we got those uh, microscope and set up our training kits we start to send those uh, training kits to those countries with our fellows from all over the world and also i took some of them uh, some of those microscopes to be congressed and transferred to the people that we know uh, already from those countries and that's why how we can uh, decrease the amount of transportation codes and those are the current uh, numbers in those uh, countries. After we transfer those uh, training kits, we start live stream training support. Uh, as you can see here, uh, our de dear friend uh, Sharval, we donate some instruments, training microscopes and materials, then started uh, initiated 
Life Team Training Station with two neurosurgeons in Beirut, Lebanon, and they, they were able to practice by day round. Other than life team uh, support, we also have like offline training support, which we share bicycle, microvascular bypass training curriculum, demonstration videos, over, over 10 hours uh, recorded videos with, with new assessment to that we introduce, which enable any kind of like trainees uh, to practice myconosomosis uh, by their own and assess the result by their own. Other than live stream of flying support, we also start to provide in-person uh, local hands-on courses in some of those centers. And those are like our uh, training course uh, set up, uh, 10 microscopes and one including uh, one additional uh, demonstration microscopes. And after I, I collect those uh, microscopes and here at UW Medicine, I put them in suitcase and travel uh, in those countries and organize those courses with, with our colleagues from those countries. So we start in Turkey. Uh, we, we did first course in Istanbul, then in Diyarbakir 1, Erzurum, the most rural place of the uh, Turkey, east side of the Turkey, and biggest institution, biggest city in those uh, places. And then Tbilisi, Georgia, our neighbor country, and Bakı, Azerbaijan. Those are the like, first six courses that we organized. In every course, we, we started lectures, almost like one, one and a half hour to two hours lectures before doing anything i would like to introduce the historical background and how we like the microneosaur evolved from all the way beginnings to to because I, I realize that if they don't understand it, the train is the resident if they don't understand the, how important is such a training they don't they don't continue after our courses and then I, I present a couple of uh, Professor Bashka's uh, cases and uh, which he used uh, similar techniques. And then I did live demonstration as you can see here, uh, microscope to the camera or two observer to even one center, my camera didn't work and uh, I was able to do the uh, demonstration over videos, previously recorded videos. Then, hands-on section. So this is our general uh, schedule for a uh, course. And we had one day course in uh, seven places. We started the lectures, as I mentioned, case presentation and live demonstration. And and uh, in those one day courses, we just go with the like easiest uh, material and like big materials like panel drain, one for inch panel drain and six or sutures. We did one entrant, one end site, and one side site anastomosis. That was like initiating of a process. So after I left, those people had that uh, chance to follow uh, and, and do more by their round because I left a couple of microscopes wherever I went. So two day course, we include silicone tube, three millimeter silicone tube with nine all sutures, much finer materials, finer sutures, and also. Uh, you are able to do some one at least one uh, entrant anastomosis on chicken vessels. So two day course we organized in uh, Paraguay. Uh, we, we gave lectures. Dr. Nirapata from Brigham Women's he also gave lectures. He was present in uh, Paraguay at that time, and also present his uh, some cases. First day, same schedule, panel drain, uh, six source features, uh, anastomosis, second day, silicone tube, and at the end of the day, uh, one and ten chicken anastomosis. Th three day course schedule, we included a chicken vessel at the last day, third day, three anastomosis with chicken vessels, and we did a such course, three day course in Guadalajara, Mexico last year. So far, nine hands-on courses in five uh, low-income countries, and we trained one uh, 151 trainees in those courses without any charge. Uh, it was no cost courses. And when I started doing such courses uh, in in that book, uh, I I found Professor Shaggy's uh, chapter and read. 
And as you can see here, they organized the first microsurgical course in 1968 in, in Zurich. That time they didn't have in a, even the laboratory, which we didn't have laboratory in those, most of those centers other than Paraguay and Mexico. We organized those courses, just conference rooms and other like laboratory spaces. They had the pathology department, they did have the course in pathology department, 10 of the microscope that they, they borrow from Zeiss and we didn't have like a company support, but we, we had all, already 10 microscopes and they had like jewelry for self. We, we were using the basic tweezer set for the course. After maybe like a, over 50 years later, we, we simulate the same thing with our setup. And those are some, some the case is that whoever does our uh, training curriculum uh, here at UW Medicine, those are our fellows from Chad, Turkey, Georgia, and India. They start to do vascular cases in their practice, and they send us those videos back to us as an example what they achieved. And we start to advocate what we, we do, and we gave lectures in in multiple uh, platforms, in person and online lectures. Then also we present lots of posts in national, international uh, meetings, congress. And one example here last year in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, I was able to give 10 minutes talk about uh, our initiative. Then after the meeting, one uh, participant, Dr. Miranda, came to me and he said, like, we have a beautiful love and we would like to do something together. Then it was in March that we met. And then in, in July, we were in uh, Guadalajara. They have beautiful love. And I also took some microscope that they already have really good laboratory. And we organized three-day course in Mexico. And also very recently, a couple months ago, I was in South Africa, Cape Town for WFNS meeting. And... My contact, one of the best uh, friend, uh, Yannick from Chad, he knows lots of other uh, people, neurosurgeon from uh, the continent. And during the lunch the session time, we, have, we gather uh, and we discuss about what we can do. And they, they are planning to invite me to their congress in November. Maybe we are planning to work on to organize such course in, in their courses. And this is something else, like the Turkish Nurses Society, we are initiating a particular basic hands-on microsomot course in Turkey. And the first one will be in April in a, in a month in Turkey. And I will go there and organize a couple more uh, courses other than that one. Uh, and we, we collect those, uh, all events that we achieved so far in a paper and uh, already published and available online in our surgery. I encourage you to read it. It is really kind of like team works and those are the, all our uh, team members. And we have like lots of organization and individual collaborators from all over the world that contribute to our work. And we, we spend uh, some amount of money for to purchase microscope to organize courses and all of this stuff. And as you can see here, hands-on courses, like we spent like 20, 20% of the money that we spent was for the, just the courses. And I, I would like to especially thanks to Dr. Danza, our chairman, and uh, he always uh, guide us, uh, and also my two, two mentors, Professor Tura and uh, Bashke, of course, Professor Yashagi. And I would like to finish my talk with is words, the better we see, uh, the more we know, the more we know, the better we see. Thank you for your attention. I would like to answer if you have any question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karis, uh, for your intro introducing your excellent training curriculum. So now we are open for discussion. Can I have some comment or uh, question? Professor Kostadin, can you hear me? I'm a mute, please, Kostadin. Please unmute yourself. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it really, thank you. Uh, it is a fantastic initiative. I think this is uh, opening the eyes of many young people who are not having access to uh, real microsurgical work. 
Um, here in Japan, probably you know, we have uh, commercially available sets of uh, uh, optical systems and uh, sets, particularly siliconized tubes for that. Uh, I would like just to, to, to ask two small questions. One is, uh, what is the objective of the, the final objective of the course? As I understand, this is a 10 0 suture on uh, chicken wing. Is it, is it that the, the point? And uh, my second question is, do you have really uh, a training course which is constantly online in which the uh, instructor is able to observe online what the trainees are doing and able to instruct them about that? So these are my two small questions. <laughs> okay. You. Yeah. Thanks so much, Professor. So I would like to mention briefly what our approach, as I mentioned, but normally if, if there's a such courses in, in Turkey, we had like beautiful course that Professor Yashagi initiated in Zurich that uh, given by, by uh, Rosemary Creek here, we have courses, but in those courses, we, we changed the approach a little bit and the participants, they don't have to come our places. So we go wherever they need and we didn't charge. They don't have to spend any money. They don't have to spend any time and, and and wherever we go, we just introduce the how to do it. And in our approach, we we enable them to do by day round. We introduce a medicine objective self assessment tool that enables any like new beginner trainees to do such training by day round and assess their results by day round. So I don't need to watch their practice. They can, they can assess their practice at the end of their each attempt according to our schedule. So in those courses, one day course, we just show them how to, to start, how to do basically like step by step, end to end, end to side, and side to side. And even for one day courses to make it like easier to understand and practice, we start with bigger materials, pen rose rain, one fourth inch, and six so. so they didn't have to deal with like the small needles at the beginning. One day course, and then wherever we went in those sand, those courses, we left our microscope there, a couple microscope. Whoever wants to do more, they had available setup for free. And even with one microscope, everybody like can can do some practice and complete. For example, a Dr. Bajkia's curriculum in just one month even maybe less than one month and they, they can circulate that. They can give it to other like friends to complete in another one. And those are, those are like our approach. So we, we enable them to do, do as much as they can. They just need to purchase like maybe the sutures and the materials and the best, best uh, training material is the chicken. After, after some practice with Penrose drain, even though they don't have silicone tubes, they can just jump on it and start start practice with the chicken vessel, a biologic material, which is almost almost like available everywhere for like very cheap prices. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. And, uh, that's all. Thank so, you. Dr. Ahmad Fawad Piruzal, can I have a comment? Yes. Uh, Salam alaikum. Konnichiwa. Uh, uh, Tashokur, <laughs> arigato. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Abdullah uh, Kales. And uh, as you know, uh, we are. Uh, I'm Dr. Ahmad Fawad Firzad from Afghanistan, and uh, we have a uh, very difficulties in Afghanistan, as you know, and uh, especially uh, nowadays that uh, the sanctions and uh, the uh, we are very poor country, and uh, but uh, uh, in the uh, Low income countries, and uh, I interested, and uh, I like to say thank you and uh, for your presentation and congratulation for your achievement, and uh, you uh, did, did a lot for uh, our colleagues in different countries, and we would like to draw your attention for Afghanistan as well for Afghanistan neurosurgery, and uh, uh, it's. Uh, Good news that we have relationship with uh, Turkey as well, and uh, uh, the only country that we uh, it's possible to take visa is Turkey and Iran, and uh, 
if it's possible for our colleagues, for young neurosurgeons uh, to uh, some uh, trainings, especially for uh, micro neurosurgery, it would be uh, great uh, for uh, Afghanistan, for our people, for our neurosurgeons. And uh, uh, I would like to say thank you for you, for uh, Professor Kato and all our colleagues that uh, they like to support Afghanistan, especially neurosurgery in Afghanistan through the neurosurgery, uh, help with our poor people. Thank you very much. Shukran. Arigato. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Pizat. Uh, I would like to I would like to contribute as much as I can. So we should, should keep keeping in contact and uh, try to find out the solution that how we can uh, proceed further. Thank you. So, Professor Elion, can you hear me? Can yes, I have? Yes, I can hear. Yes, thank you so much for asking. Um, but, uh, just one second, I can see. Yes, now yes. Uh, uh, Doctor Kadeshi, Nasal Sen Efendi, at it's a, it's a pleasure to, to join uh, everyone, but especially to have you here and show your experience. I understand you have completed the full circle of, of, of your training with the Masters of Neurosurgery. And then it happened to be that all of them are Turkish. Professor Yashar Gil and then Ture Sensei. And then I realized that you went all the way to, to Yale to, to study with Dr. Murad Gunel. But it looks yeah. like you're spending quite a lot of time with uh, Dr. Bashkaya. I have only one question. Um, before that, I want to thank you very much for the work that you're doing, you and all the colleagues. It's, it's, it's a true gem when you spend all that time to help others. You said that you attend your courses in person. You said that uh, there are times that you distribute materials online. Do you distribute writing materials for preparation for these uh, trainees or you carry those with them and you have it for them yes, yes could you, you please re repeat the question i couldn't get it okay so you travel in different places of the world and you you take with you the microscopes and the set of instruments and whenever you can you leave those behind that's wonderful now you are there you teach them you show them the cases, you show them hands-on training. But on the other side, do you provide them with hands-on written notes for them to keep it? So, yeah, so to enable them to keep keep moving forward, we, we share our training videos. So here at UWS, Dr. Bashkia's curriculum, it's, it's like a really structured curriculum and we have already recorded like 10 hours of uh, videos, demonstration videos, very detailed videos that I prepared here and including the assessment part. So this is the most important one because when we start such, such uh, live stream stations and like remote uh, training stations, that was the biggest problem. Who can, who can like assess their result? If they cannot like assess their result by day round, there's no way to initiate such, such training, remote training. And in those videos, like all, almost like 10 hours recording demonstration videos, we also include that assessment. So right now, like we share all those videos with the people that we are in contact. So they can download, they can watch whenever they want, and they can practice with micro stuff that we left there. And in, in those curriculum, we start first reading. Reading from the like the pioneers, like the microvascular pioneers from Yashagi's like uh, books or uh, from Dr. Aklan's book, and watching those train videos, all new uh, like cases. Then like like after fifth day, they can just start read like watching my training videos and uh, then start practice on it. So a lot of reading before even any kind of like practice. Um, thanks so much for the answer, but I wanted to share this other information. Here at the University of Toronto, where I spent uh, the research time, but as well I had the opportunity to explore other avenues. Uh, twice a year, the Department of Neurosurgery organizes a hands-on course, which includes several uh, 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 techniques into the neurosurgery, but as well bypass 
we are very lucky to have the opportunity to use very good quality microscopes and we have supplies and at, at times when we are short i have reached to my mentor and professor yoko kada and we discuss about this we have uh, prepared now uh, a manual that can be used by young trainees with notes on how to start, how to set up, and how to continue on training in bypass. I was wondering if you have such one, but I realize that you provide them with videos now. Thank you for your answer. And maybe I'll reach out back to you. So who knows, maybe we can connect and cooperate on that then. So thank you so yeah. very much for your wonderful work. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much for your comments. And there are a lot of other like manuals, like uh, initially, like the written by, by the pioneers, one of the best one is Dr. Aklan. So, like each each fellow doc, whoever wants to do our uh, curriculum practice, they they have to read a couple books, including one manual uh, from Dr. Aklan. I think he, one of the best like available. And there are lots of other other manuals also in the market. And I suggest like I can share the details later on. Thank you, Dr. Ben. Do you have some comment or question? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Isumo, for your uh, sharing the session, and also uh, Dr. Kiris for your for your great work in uh, sharing uh, and uh, distributing the uh, the the micro and the Moses uh, workshop worldwide. And uh, and I, I really appreciate appreciate uh, your work because uh, it uh, uh, you. You are trying to um uh, uh connect the whole world and uh, also the LMIC uh with this uh, microsurgery uh trainings. Uh, I I would like to ask a question. What is your uh viewpoint? Uh, how 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 to uh establish a, a sustainable uh, tra uh training program uh in uh, microsurgery? Uh, take for example, taking the bypass as an example that uh, might requiring uh, the uh, uh, less instruments. I'm not talking about uh, skull base or endoscopic surgery, which you might need uh, expensive um, uh, endoscope or uh, 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 instruments. But for example, taking a bypass uh, as an uh, example. So how do you think the LMIC uh, can develop a sus sustainable um, program or how to run a, a basic uh, small uh, laboratory in their own setting. What is your uh, experience and also a real point? Uh, my uh, same comment is about that. Uh, just now, uh, Professor Arion uh, asked uh, and uh, asked about the video, uh, the written material and uh, and your comment that the uh, video is uh, very important to uh, help them to change. I would also like to I uh, think uh, Dr. Raja and Dr. Liu uh, in comparing a collection of the ACNS uh, weapons. I think for me as a young neurosurgeon, and uh, they have a good collection of the ACNS weapons by uh, by topics, uh, which uh, have a huge amount of the information and very useful uh, for us if we want to learn a lot of the different topics and uh, know the updates of the neurosurgery. So uh, I think this is also one of the uh, good options. And uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ban, for your comments. Uh, I would like to mention about a couple other things, so about the sustainability. So whatever we are doing, like those are not new techniques. So even like the people starting like 1970s, 80s, maybe the golden age of like such practice and those are the most basic trainings that I believe everybody should should uh, get it get it in their own institution for free. No no residents any any trainees should pay for such such uh, basic trainings and to make it uh, sustainable in those places wherever we reach out. So we we donate our microscope. The most cost uh, most uh, the, the most important thing is the microscope. So we find out where we can find cheap, high-quality optic microscopes. So I, I already showed those microscopes that we use. They were once, they were like type brands, Zeiss, Bosch & Lomb, or all other brand microscopes. We find out where we can get those in the United States. I believe in Europe, like people could very easily find such microscopes in 
online auction web page. So we have a solution for the microscope. Then we came up a solution for the, the, the most, uh, the second uh, expensive thing is the instruments. So like we, we look back how the people initiate such training in, in the old time and whenever they, like the pioneers, Julius Jacobson, whenever they initiate microsurgery in their practice, they didn't have any instruments for specifically designed for uh, microsurgery. They, they got jewelry for that that everybody knows and from jewelry stores and start using. And in one uh, book forward, uh, Julius Jackson mentioned that they, they, they have a basic test to see that those jewelry for that that they got from jewelry uh, stores is feasible, is okay to use microscope microsurgery or not. They, they put their back of their hands under the microscope and try to take out the hair follicle under the microscope, if it didn't slip off or cut the, the, the uh, hair follicle, that means it was a really good instrument. So inspired that, and we include in our paper, uh, whatever he defined, it's a tweezer. So we go online, we, we test lots of different tweezer sets, and we come, at, come up with a $10 set, which has like eight uh, forceps that you can use for such practice. They are not excellent, but they, they does the job very well. So we find out a solution for microscope for the instruments, and then the rest is training materials and and sutures. So like each suture is not like too expensive, but still expensive. We couldn't find out a really good uh, source for that, but even online uh, you can find like uh, expired sutures, training grade, surgical grade, and you can get it from like Alibaba from every like all over the world, you can get it in those uh, materials. And like, uh, like after, after they have like instruments and microscopes, so they can just buy, buy sutures and start, start practice on chicken vessel, which is available everywhere. So after, after initial uh, training, it like maybe Panera's drain to understand how to do it step by step and make it uh, like silicone to couple more attempts <laughs> and then the rest should be only only chicken there is no better like materials that you can find for for practice you can do advanced sectomy perfect and then to be even like lots of micro dissection to find out and uh, to vessels in chicken parts we love to use chicken drumstick and and that's that's all like like they just need to have like uh, some some sutures and the rest is like available wherever uh, they are. And we are trying to increase our numbers, donate more and more microscope, but uh, we will see. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Keres. I wish you all the best in further developing your work. Thank you. Thanks uh, so much. We will move to uh, next speaker, uh, Professor Concetio Di Loco. The title is Management of Optic Pathway Tumors. Professor, could you start your lecture? Okay, I will try to start. Please uh, share the There is some issue with the internet, it seems. So he's not the he's back again. Prof. Biroko, you are locked up. I have some problem with the line. 
So Hello. maybe you can hear to me. Can you listen to me? Yes, we can. Yes. 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 Now yes. I don't know how to open. Okay. <coughs> Just a second. Can you see the slides? Yes. Yeah. Can you make yes. it full screen, please? Okay, you can see. Can you please make it full screen? I'm sharing already. Just below the slide, there is a flask shift symbol you can click on that below the slide right side bottom on the screen so it will go into the full screen mode you can see or not Uh, I'm do, sorry. Do, do you see some symbols below your slide on the PowerPoint? There are four symbols like squares and a flask. The flask is the fourth one. If you click it, it will go to the full screen mode. Why don't you ask the other speaker <laughs> to start no, and they will try uh, uh, a connection? I am not in a room. I'm uh, traveling and my connection is very poor. Could you ask the other people to talk and then I will come back? Uh, yes. Okay. Saito Sensei, are you okay? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. So I was a huge, so I just connect uh, the, my phone. So Okay, I I'd like to show you my slide. Sorry. Can you see? Too small. It is upside down, Sensei. Sorry, I have a internet trouble now. So I could connect only using my phone. Is it uh, difficult? It is difficult, Sensei. Difficult, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. Can can you uh, just on the PowerPoint in your uh, mobile? No, I, I could not. I could not. So uh, I could not send my slide to my iPhone. Okay. Mm. Any solution, Raja? There is no solution, Sensei. Mm -hmm. No solution? Too, too small? Too small. It is like upside down. Mm -hmm. You cannot read. Excuse me, you can send your slides to Professor Boon and he will play the slides. Uh, there is, uh, can you please mail it to us, Professor? We'll play from our side. Maybe you can talk through the Sorry? phone. Liu Sensei, Liu Sensei, slide okay, must come, Sensei. Yeah, so they okay, and I in this in a slide. Well, I found that in on the show, it's still not in the world. Uh huh. 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 Uh また別の機会に。ああ、ダメです。そうですね。すいません。あれですかね、加藤先生。
。そうでしかしょうがない。ちょっと小さすぎて、なんか赤いものが真ん中に映ってるっていうぐらいしか先生見えないので。はい、それぐらいのことね。じゃあ、じゃあ次回にしますか、先生大。大丈夫ですかまた後であの送りますけれども。先生、そう、斉藤先生、サムネミテーション。そう、メビー、アナダチャンス。はい、申し訳ありません。リスクジュールアパーフォーヒースプログラム。OK。Is it OK, Ben? Thank you. I'm sorry. Can I, can I try? 斉藤先生、じゃあ聞いててください、どうぞ。はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、There is a green button.、Um, Click on the green button which says share screen. Third one, after the third one. I don't one, see any. <laughs> nothing b o t t o m It's a problem.、Uh, I'm trying to. I'm in condivision according to my com computer.、Mm. No, eh? 加藤先生、あのアンミュートお願いします。あ、uh,、エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォーシング。エンフォー Thanks、okay.、Uh, after this, a lot of travels we can try to start. Now, I will just、uh, want to share some things about、um, the management of the Uh, Professor t i v o k o you are present now. Yeah, can, yeah. can you try to share it, uh, uh, your screen again? Yeah. 
being a problem. We're going to be told in house. Yes, uh, it's working now. Yeah, but I'm afraid that it goes away the signer in every second. So we have a tumor that uh, remain confined to the optic nerve, tumors that can involve the optic chasm or involve the uh, grow exotically to involve the hypothalamus. This, uh, the majority of these tumors are benign tumors, mainly pyrocytic astrocytoma. So it's not uh, strange to know that uh, the, this tumor is not really a friend tumor for the neurosurgeon ego because the observation is uh, the first line accepted option because this tumor can remain, uh, cannot can grow very slowly or remain stable for many years. So at the end, the neurosurgeon is called to treat only symptomatic tumor or this tumor that we see to grow rapidly on the neuroimaging studies. This, the most common clinical presentations is visual disturbance, every kind of visual disturbance from a decreased acuity to impair color perception. And uh, we know also that uh, the sporadic case represent 40, 15% of the cases and their base is a mutation in the RIS MEAP cap pathways. The other half of the cases are associated with a narrow fibromatosis, so they have the specific gen that is known. Hyper intracranial hypertension is the most typical presentation in growing tumor, and sometimes this growth is very rapid, and in minority of the cases, is a pro the progression is uh, to death. Hydrocephalus is an important item in a, a quarter of the cases. In more rarely, the presentation is a diencephalic syndrome, and you can see how these small children present in such cases. Even more rare is the precocious puberty. Why I say that it's not a friend tumor for a neurosurgeon ego? Because actually, it does not depend the result on the ability of the surgeon, but on the location of the tumor. We know that we can treat the tumor located in the uh, orbital cavity that involves the optic nerve with a, a good success, but uh, we have a very limited ability to treat the optic, uh, the retrochasmatic gliomas that involves the hypothalamus. So at the end, is we have to individualize uh, our decision according to the location the clinical condition the, of the patients and whether the tumor is uh, progressing or not. So we have, we have a green light on the tumor that uh, are inside the ocular cavity and uh, especially when the eye is blind and the goal of the operation is uh, to prevent the involvement of the chiasma or, and the development of the tumor inside the cranial cavity. Also cosmetic purpose can a good reason to operate uh, in the tumor localized in this uh, site. We have just, uh, when you go to the chiasma, on the contrary, we have to make uh, a balance between the supposed uh, benefit uh, and uh, all the risk of the operation. And uh, when the tumor uh, in involves the hypothalamus, then the justification for the surgical is uh, to try to preserve life 
and uh, so it's a little more dramatic decision. This is when the tumor is located inside the, the ocular cavity. You can see the tumor, you can remove completely the tumor, and the, you can, in most cases, preserve also the, mm, the cosmetic appearance because you can save the, the globe. You can see the tumor, you can have a, have the clan, how the sharp is the difference with the other or the controller health nerve. In some cases, like in this uh, in paper that uh, I found, they tried, they removed completely the optic nerve of the globe, which in my experience can be avoided in nearly all the cases. So it, we have to try to enter the orbit and to remove only the tumor, not like these cases. When we go, we deal with the optic chiasmic glioma, then as I said before, the acid progression can be slow or absent. We have to be very cautious and decide to operate and try eventually to use other treatment, especially under the 10 years of age is the best treatment is a chemotherapy and eventually radiotherapy. So the surgical treatment can be reserved only in an exophytic uh, chiasmatic tumor. But we have to keep present that uh, the, uh, with the operation, we can have, uh, in after other cases, a worsening of the uh, visual acuity. Only 20% can improve. And if we are able surgery, 30% remain stable. So this, uh, the decision should be for tumor that uh, we see to progress. What we have to keep in mind and experience is that the surgery has not a significant role in uh, preserving the visual acuity. acuity. If the tumor slow grows in spite of your treatment, you, the extension or the resection of the tumor is not so important for the progression of the disease. When we go to the hypothalamic involvement, then we have to operate only to preserve life. And you can see in our, this is a typical example. We have a drosephos to treat a very large tumor. We can think to the bulk, the extrinsic exophytic component and try to, uh, in, to reduce the mass of the tumor in order to uh, allow the child to survive. Or then you can see, you can uh, work on this kind of uh, gelatinous tissue that is the exophytic component. You can go to remove and then using also uh, chemotherapy, you can sometimes arrive to stop the tumor for many years or even to cure even hypothalamic tumor. This is another case. You can see uh, you can approach the tumor. This is in the cilium fissure going down to remove. And then this part should be treated with uh, chemotherapy. So the goal of surgical treatment is stop the uh, reduce the mass eventually uh, stop the progression at least in a short time is also to have a, a, a tissue diagnosis because not all these tumor are benign sometimes are malignant tumor as so this uh, uh, in the epithelial surgeon you can go with, with this uh, in anterior interspheric approach join the the region where the tumor is, beside, behind the anterior communicant artery, you can see the tumor going in the hypothalamus, and then you can try to remove this. And this can be useful in particular case, like for example, in this uh, uh, child that whose history started in the first months of life, 
and with a precocious puberty at seven. She had a, a partial removal of the tumor through a terminal approach. Then she needed a second operation to a transferoidal approach, and we used then chemotherapy and carboplatin. This child was okay. She had no neurological deficit, except some smile, the decrease of uh, uh, visual function. And then we had, uh, after many years, the tumor grow again, and then we did uh, this uh, inter-anterior and hemispheric approach to reach the hypothalamic tumors and uh, to remove. And what is important to know, you can do this operation when the hypothalamic involvement is uh, unilateral, and you have to stop a very uh, to wait for a, a, a very stormy post-operative operation, like in this case, after one week of apparent good uh, uh, result, we had a sudden drop of sodium, epilepsy seizure, uh, that needed some days to recover, and still this child needs me minor So at the end, the hypothalamic tumor is really uh, are bad, but rarely can be treated. So to summarize, this, this tumor present with a, a, in a young age with a loss of, of visual acuity, the majority tend to um, be benign, so low-grade tumors, but uh, the their prognosis depend on the location. It's a big difference with a tumor confined to the optic nerve and the tumors involving the hypothalamus, and uh, we can have uh, this kind of a distribution. In uh, the presentation, one quarter of the tumor is uh, confined to the optic nerve, so, and the majority involves the chiasma, and uh, some of them can have also extension to hypothalamus, to the hypothalamus. So this, this is uh, the case when mm, the tumor are related to near of fibroma one. In this case, the, there are a lot of experience that demonstrate that the progression is considerably slower than in the sporadic form. So in this, with a narrow F1, we can expect a better prognosis, although the tumor can grow also in these cases. The best management uh, of the tumor is still of the tumor is still controversial because we cannot have a clear idea from the literature that is a tumor rare and the most of the papers are before the ML imaging so we cannot have any in good uh, reliable informations and but what is important is that uh, the decision should be individualized and we have to make a balance of risk and benefit and considering the presentation, if there is a clinical or radiological progression, the age, the genetics of these tumors. And this is not strange that in most cases, people select observation as a first options. The MR imaging is a very yeah. what can allow us to take a decision because they eliminate very well this tumor. And uh, we can also in, in make the operation, as I said before, for uh, make a diagnosis. You can see this case, which seems a, a tumor that involves the chiasma with a big uh, uh, cystic extension and the exophytic complex that can be operated. And what we found, this was a pyramid soil astrocytoma, different histologically from the pyrocytic astrocytoma and different for the prognosis, which is very bad. So this, uh, when we have progression, we can select radiotherapy if the child is uh, older than 10 years, and chemotherapy if it is younger. And for radiotherapy, we have a several ways to deliver radiations, but the complications are very high. And you can see here 
a lot of the problems that they can follow the treatment, radiotherapeutic treatment, which nowadays tend to be excluded or limited, not only in infants, young children, but also in uh, adults. Chemotherapy now becomes the first line of treat treatment, and we can have uh, uh, the best regime is uh, with uh, Winkerstein and the carboplatin, but we can have also other regimes that have, uh, I also say it, with a major complication than the first one. The target therapy is now um, becoming, to become, to be, is uh, more important than the past. We are developing some agents that, and we think that uh, in the next year, the gene target therapy can become very important because we know the mutation that is at the base of these tumors. And so the neurosurgeons can have a role for biopsy, can have an important role with a complete surgical excision for the tumor that are confined to the optic nerve. The resection is not usually a great option in the charismatic tumor, but can be can have some advantage if, for the cases that have some ecosophytic components and a, a debulking of gross tumor removal is can be a chance in tumors that involve the abutalmos, but as a result are not very good. Then we have a need for the neosarge to treat androcephalus. Also, this is not can be more difficult than in other cases because typical uh, complications is the ascites that we don't have in other tumor, probably due to the high products content of cerebrospinal fluid in these children. And we have often to uh, change from a VP shots to ventricular arterial shots. This is a paper that I just received from my journal. You can see a summary of the literature and uh, see how long is uh, the time that it uh, takes from in the last 20 years. You can see how they um, behave with this tumor. In, uh, there also can be kind of a, a no progress or even improvement in a quarter, quarter of the cases. The majority remains stable and the only in about 20% of the case will become very have a big progression, important progression that requires surgeries. And the main complications concern the anterior compartment. We can have an anterior pituitary dysfunction, as I said, as said this can be a problem. In some case, we have a and problem that becomes a complication that remains stable for all the life. I repeat, in five years, the progress of the tumor is only for one out of six of the patients. So, so the final suggestion is that open observation remains still nowadays the first option. And that these kind of tumors are not friendly tumors for the neurosurgeon. Thank you, and excuse for so many problems. Thank you, Professor, uh, for Sorry. your uh, important lecture about optopathic tumors. So now we are open for discussion. Professor Kostadin, can I have some, some comments? Thank you very much. Uh, really, this was an excellent lecture. Some kind of summarizing uh, a lot of experience at the same time, the contemporary update. But uh, it's, <laughs> it's a humble and honorable position to comment. Uh, I practically don't have any major, many, many major question because uh, from all major points of uh, management have been uh, reached and discussed. What I would like just to ask is, uh, do you have any 
first of all, would you start with chemotherapy in mild uh, optic dysfunction uh, um, uh, with visible lesion, uh, or you will be uh, considering other options? And in the conservative management, uh, do you have any experience with uh, anti-VEGF factor with Avastin? Because recently have appeared some ideas that it might be beneficial. So another point I would like to ask is uh, regarding radiotherapy, is really 10 years a strict limit or you will use radiotherapy in highly progressive, in more progressive tumors at an earlier age? Mm, and uh, particularly gamma knife also has uh, appeared also as an option in bigger children. So uh, do you have any idea about its value? And maybe finally, uh, do you have any kind of uh, difference in the approach if you have that it is an FF1 or not an F1? <laughs> and, and sorry for that. <laughs> no, no, it helps. Uh, very yeah. nice questions. The, no, my presentation today was very confused. Uh, oh, no, it was very and uh, so express very well the confusion of this subject. Because in the past, uh, let's say um, 30 years ago, our people um, underwent a radiotherapy. And then after 10 years, we saw very bad uh, problems in these children, you know, better than me. They had really, really very bad results. Then um, came chemotherapy. Radiotherapy was almost abandoned. And then uh, chemotherapy um, works quite well. But nowadays, we know that more than half of the case, they are stable, even without the therapy. So it's again, we don't really know whether the chemotherapy was really... So I came to your quest, first question. If you see small tumors in a very young child, you start direct with chemotherapy. You are right to erase this problem because we know that the tumor can stay stable without the chemotherapy. The chemotherapy has also problems. We tend to under-evaluate the complication of chemotherapy. Then the other focus point that you said is about the delivery of radiation therapy using a more focused therapy. Again, this can be useful in a tumor that has some uh, exophytic component, but these are the same that we tend to aggress surgically. So again, I think that uh, in radiotherapy, in, uh, even in the adult, has uh, um, a decreasing role, especially now that we can develop, uh, this was your last, last point, we can uh, have uh, some uh, new drugs that act on the mutation of this tumor, and with apparent good results. This, but these are still a very uh, it's a young uh, experience. We still don't know the longer term, term results. Especially when, in case in which you have slow growing tumors, it's very difficult to evaluate the results because it takes years to have a, and they also a big number of the tumors to have a really conclusive remarks. But I'm sure that we are going on targeted therapy rather than on the surgical management of this tumor. Thank you very much. Professor Do uh, we have some comment? Yes. Professor Di Rocco, buongiorno. Oh, buongiorno. I'm, 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 uh, I'm honored to be present uh, and, and have this opportunity to attend your lecture. My, my experience in, uh, in tumors of the theria in and around the, um, the optic chiasm and the optic nerve and the optic pathway is, is limited. And I would not, uh, I would not risk to make any comments other than that, uh, Currently in our center, uh, the bulking and uh, the attempts to remove the tumor uh, via endoscopically 
is taking over any other means. And as we proceed with the removal of the tumor whenever possible, then we conduct genetic studies in all cases, which then leads to a decision either that be chemotherapy or radiotherapy with when there is a possibility to conduct a hypothalamic protection. However, I, I agree with all the side effects occurring during the length of the treatment, that being from chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or the combination of both. And for that reason, it's still that surgery remains mainstay when possible. That's how things work on our end, and that's at the University of Toronto. Uh, in un'altra pagina, non ti devi preoccupare per le, le difficoltà dell'internet, cose che accadano, <ride> <ride> però è veramente un piacere di averti incontrato finalmente. Mille grazie. No, I thank you, I, I ti ringrazio. But, but I was very anxious. With all this problem at the end, I made a, a very bad presentation. But at the least, what now? Just I wanted to say that um, obviously I was at the beginning in a young age very enthusiastic to uh, treat to use surgery, uh, surgical treatment. But nowadays, I'm not sure uh, what to do because my impression is that. Okay, we go, let's say, not opting never that should, should they be operated, so no discussion. But in the charismatic tumor, we go there, we remove the exophytic uh, part, then we reach what we believe is a uh, normal tissue, and then we refrain to progress. And then we see the results. And uh, I can't have a way to predict these results. Because after this kind of operation, we can have a worsening in a visual acuity, let's say one third of the cases. In the more than half of the case, things do not change. The tumor is removed, but the visual is stable, but we don't know then if the tumor will progress or not. We cannot predict. And then when we go, as you say, for the hypothalamic tumors, okay, we feel that we did a, a good uh, job because we removed a gross part of the tumor. Probably we saved the, the life at the least for uh, some e years. But at the end, we remain with a very bad taste in the mouth because we feel that this operation is uh, very heavy and probably not so very useful. So what I want to say with my presentation, with the big conclusion is that we still are in uh, with this tumor in a situation in which what we do is not strict, a strict decision. We remain with doubts every decision we take. So as such, I, I'm not happy to say that we are going to hope for a targeted therapy because our, we are surgeons and we would like to continue to be neurosurgeons. But for the patient, I think that targeted therapy will become more and more useful. Non so se mi sono spiegato meglio o peggio. Certo che sì, certo che sì. Volevo dirti, eh, eh... Mi continuerò in inglese per questa parte. Being present in these events, uh, it's not much, at least for my end, to come and uh, have my say and talk and share my experience, which is limited, but more so to join that experience that you share. La collezione di anni di lavoro che voi presentate è la lezione più bella. Perciò vi ringrazio. Thank you so much, Professor Di Rocco. Thank you to you. Thank you very much. Especially Dr. for Dr. Bea, some comments mm -hmm. or question? Yes, uh, I have some uh, questions. Uh, first of all, uh, really thank you so much uh, 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 for your uh, 
uh, presentation. It's not uh, difficult to understand. Uh, we can understand that it's a very good uh, presentation and uh, thank you so much for your sharing. I, I, I have uh, actually this tumor is uh, it's not uh, very common and uh, it remains a uh, question to me. So I would like to ask in your opinion, so uh, we uh, we can, as mentioned in your presentation, we can consider conservative approach as the mortality is low. But for example, if there is a, um, a small interval growth on CVO imaging, so would you advise uh, radio surgery first or, sur or surgery first? Uh, which one would you recommend if there is a small uh, interval growth in the tumor with interval imaging? So uh, this is my first uh, question. My second question is uh, in your experience, how to deal with uh, those um, uh, tumor that, uh, that uh, progress despite radio surgery and uh, also, the, um, also the chemotherapy? So uh, would you think there still be a role of the surgery for debulking if the tumor is not resettable? Would you try to uh, uh, achieve a major debulking and uh, get the uh, samples for uh, next uh, generation sequencing? Okay, I'm considering the first question, when will the tumor is rapidly progressing, is a generally malignant form, a very aggressive form. So you, you have your answer quite soon. If it is a slow growing, can be a problem because uh, obviously what you do, you repeat exam, uh, some seriate MR studies to be convinced that the tumor is growing. And if, when you are convinced it's growing, probably surgical exploration can be useful when chemotherapy uh, does not work or radiotherapy. But I think it's more interesting for the, nowadays for the neurosurgeon is when the tumor grows in the hypothalamus. Because in the past, we believe that it was not useful to make an operation. Nowadays, and uh, I did uh, several cases, when the tumor is involving only one part of the hypothalamus, right or left, not all. When it's a ball, all the hypothalamus, I think the game is lost. But when it's a, only one side, you can have a very uh, gross removal of the tumor, even in this supposed hypothalamic re region. And the, as this tumor tends to be um, like a gelatinous part, it's not very solid. You can really remove and the great majority of the tumor. And in these cases, what is difficult is to follow the patients after, because mm, it's difficult to manage endocrinologically for the, but this is only for the first two or three weeks. After this, these children behave very well. So mm, I think that we have to operate. This is maybe the most correct indication for an optical waste tumor are when they go in the hypothalamic and they need a good operation from my ass. I, I, I think that you're right. In this uh, second uh, op, uh, case, we should be very aggressive. Yes, thank you so much. And this is uh, a very uh, good. Thank you. Uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, is a very valuable comment from you that uh, we should consider if it's a unilateral hypothalamic involvement. So, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Too. So, Doctor Sam Jo Yi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for uh, your uh, That was an excellent talk. Learned a lot uh, about it. It's quite a rare tumor, uh, at least in, from my experience. Uh, I would like to ask two questions. Uh, first of all, um, uh, have you had any experience in which uh, 
these tumors actually did not turn out to be optic nerve gliomas. Maybe from the imaging, they look like optic nerve gliomas. But uh, since the mainstream of treatment now is just observation or maybe radio surgery, have you had experience where you went in and you took a biopsy and it was not an optic nerve glioma and maybe we wished that we went in earlier to do the surgery to get the biopsy? So that's maybe the first question. Uh, the second question, would you uh, think that during the biopsy or the excision, if we go in for optic nerve gliomas, whether a frozen section uh, does help uh, in, in managing the patient? Thanks. That's a good question. Actually, in the, I had only two cases of a astroblastoma. And then, so in the first year of observation, this maybe the diagnosis was not correct. In this case, we thought they were pyrocytic astrocytoma and the artery were astroblastoma and this, both children died in a couple of years. So we, you can have a different histology. And in this case, we were not able to make a distinction on the base of the neuroimaging uh, study or, and the clinical findings. So it's possible that you are wrong. So maybe the biopsy can be an option. And uh, nowadays, biopsy can be also more indicated to find, to try to find some genetic uh, aberration that maybe can help at least in the future, the targeted therapy. Con for the second point, uh, if frozen sections can be useful, mm, probably yes, you have also time to have it because the astrocytoma can be um, quite easily uh, distinguished on the frozen sections. But I don't, I don't think that they will change uh, what you are doing as in case of uh, other tumors in which you can have uh, some uh, input to operate uh, more aggressively or less aggressively on the base of the frozen section. Here, yeah, the great majority are pyrocytic astrocytoma. So the frozen section do not really add uh, important uh, confirmation for you to proceed or not. You are limited in doing it because the, you, have, you don't want, want to make damage to the optic pathways you know, when you are operating on focus, uh, on focalized, focalized tumors. And in other cases, when you have bigger tumors like this involving the uh, hypothalamus, you don't need a frozen section, you know that they are malignant that you can continue to work. So I think the first thing is myops should have probably done more extensively. For the second, I don't think that the frozen will be useful in this context. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank Any you. comment or question? Okay, thank you again, Professor Di Rocco, for your uh, important lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. Uh, sorry again. So, Raja, may I close the session? Ben? ben? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, for sure. So, uh, if there's no more question, then um, shall I uh, close the uh, uh, this uh, ACNS uh, webinars today? So, uh, thank you very much for all of you uh, to come, and uh, thank you the chair today, Professor Sumo, and also our uh, speakers today. We understand uh, there is uh, some technical problems, but uh, uh, but thank you all of you for the support of the ACNS uh, activities. Uh, thank you, Professor Saito. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Abdiha. And uh, thank you, uh, Professor Diruko. And uh, and also thank you, our uh, two discussants today, Professor Kosatin and also uh, Professor Arion. So uh, on behalf of the prof uh, Professor uh, Kato, uh, I would like to thank you all of you for joining us uh, tonight. So uh, we'll see you in our next uh, ACNS, uh, YNS, uh, webinar soon. And uh, I hope uh, all of you a uh, uh, a good day or good night for all of you. Thank just, you. Uh, just, just before close, I want to say something to all the speakers. Thank you very much for excellent talk, especially at you. Uh, you're the, my uh, uh, entire my my teacher. Thank you very much.
always I learned a lot from your uh, beautiful lectures uh, with beautiful slides. Just I want to ask, <laughs> so what, you re much. what really the first uh, symptom of the uh, glioma, the, the, no, the optic the glioma, or hypothalamic glioma? Really, first uh, symptom. Sebastian? Uh, the really first symptom of the hypothalamic uh, glioma. Ah, yes. Hmm. Yes, I, but uh, I think that the Professor uh, Helmut in Bartalanfi uh, hmm. is a very great uh, surgeon in, in this type of tools. He, he taught me that we could do more than uh, I believed. So after this experience, I started to be more aggressive in this uh, hyperamic tumors because it demonstrate that this tumor could be removed. So I will say that uh, I will take the, the lens to thank him because he may open a, a pathway for me for uh, to be more aggressive in the hypothalamic tumors. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe Saito Sensei, uh, we are so sorry for your... Yes. Uh, 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 and convenient your presentation. Maybe we can invite you again, maybe uh, April 14th. Yes. If you, if you can. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, so, Alice, maybe you can join us. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, Dr. Kalis, thank you very much for I really appreciate you too in my lecture for the next time. Okay. I, I will uh, pretend. Thank Thanks so much, because you are very interested in the, the low-income countries' uh, uh, education. So we, we work together, Saito-sensei. And Kalis, uh, thank you very much for your great uh, initiative, initiative hands-on. Maybe we, we should work together in the future, I think. Okay, so, uh, thank you very much. That's all. Thanks, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Oh, what? Thank you very much. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. no more comments. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Ichimo sensei, arigato gozaimashita. Arigato gozaimashita. See you next time. Okay. Ah. Dr. So Abdullah, I, I send you an email. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.